Um, so Jess, we were just uh, stopping and downloading video. Uh, Jessica was saying that when she first started um, having conversations about riveting with me, she didn't quite grasp my use of the language um, because I'd say that your rivet length should be for the head is one and a half to two times the material thickness. And she was like, well, what material is that referring to? And in fact, what it's referring to is the diameter of the shank of your rivet. Now, regarding what size rivet to actually use, that is a whole another bucket of fish. And I can't rightly say that I know. Um, you know, I'm sure there's an equation, if you're a boiler maker and you're building steam engines, you'd know exactly how many rivets per inch and how much pressure and blah, blah, blah. But for most of what we do nowadays, um, it's, you know, you're looking at the mechanical joints of something like a pair of tongs, or you're doing a, uh, a tenon on the shoulder of something like an L bracket or a hanging bracket. And all I can say is this, if, you make a undersized decision, you have a greater chance of your piece failing, okay? That does not mean that you should go and put a one inch rivet through a one inch wide piece of material. Um, so I think going back to conversations around wooden tenons, I think the equation, give or take, is thirds or at worst um, half with quarters either side, if that makes sense. So don't get overexcited and put a massive thing and leave yourself with no side meat. Uh, so, you know, thirds is a pretty good ratio. And when we do our, um, our rivet plates, I used to put quarter inch rivets in my rivet plates and I've now gone up to a 3 8 um, I suppose I could go in between but um, it's by the by but I use the 3 8 because they do not fail on me and having had rivets fail at inopportune times is kind of it sucks but that's all by the by um, so common problem I don't know how to calculate how long my rivet should be so if we say that we have uh, Colors. We'll call this the material thickness, A, and we'll call this one material thickness, B. Right. And we have our rivet, which is here, pre-headed because I'm lazy. Uh, and that will come through A and B and then based upon the diameter we'll call D, right? that will give you the length of your head material. So <clears throat> we say rivet rivet length equals A plus B. This is not enough length. <laughs> <laughs> RL equals A plus B. And obviously if you only have one piece of material there you don't need B as well because it's just A. Um, Likewise if you have three pieces of material. Yeah. Etc. D times by one and a half. All right? It's easy enough. And that's how you calculate your rivet length. So, and that one and a half is their minimum. If you need more because of testing that you've done, add more. And this goes back to all of these things. Um, 
you know, you go, okay, I want to make a punch which is so long and it has a taper of this and I do my calculation, I make my punch and it's a little on the skinny side, add a little bit more material. Don't stick to the mathematics. The mathematics is merely there to give you guidance. That's where engineers go wrong. Um, so, <laughs> give engineers a hard time. But calculate what you think it should be. Do it, test it. If it isn't enough, add more. Um, you know, often I'll add an extra eighth of an inch, something like that. So, if we're saying that this is, uh, call this one half a half, so RL is, half plus a half plus diameter, we'll call that a half, to make math easy, times one and a half. Okay, so, so that's one inch plus one and a quarter, right? Half, no, three quarters. That should be sufficient. I might go to just one and three quarters. I might cut that closer to one and seven eighths, maybe two inches, just so that I have plenty of material for that head. But, <laughs> but, 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 but wait, there's more. Don't go too much. Yeah. If you're getting into a three to one ratio, and um, this is the basic rule of, of smithing, okay? If you're in a three to one, that is starting to get really unstable. If you're in a, a two to one, this you can push around all day long, whether that's working on the edge of material under the power hammer or under a press, it's not gonna fold and buckle. You get into the three to one ratio, it really starts to get unstable and start folding on you and getting out of shape. Um, and you'll you know, wind up getting like fish lips down the side, the uh, culture. So in the same regard, don't get yourself into the three to one ratio here because it is gonna cause you misery. Uh, and trying to push all that material down um, gets tricky, but two to one all day long, easy enough. Okay, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. That is addendum one. There may or may not be others. <laughs>